Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, for the content for this episode of Bullet Points this morning, we are going to talk about something that's a little contentious right now, and I know there's a lot of feelings about this, but I have a question to ask you guys. Is the NRA saving face with what I'm about to show you, or did they actually do their job on what I'm about to show you? I'll be honest, I don't have a way to verify it personally. I'm going to bring this to you, I'm going to lay it out, and let me know what you guys think in the comments field below, because it's one of two things here. This is either they did a good job in this, and they made a small mistake on another piece, or they did what they were supposed to do normally, and they're just doing a puff piece to make up for when they messed up earlier. It's one of those two things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments field below, because this is something I want to hear from you guys on. I'm going to do a quick read from our sponsor that made this videos, the videos for this week possible, and then I'm going to show you everything. It'll be linked in the description box per usual. Let's get to it, and I cannot wait to lay this out for you. So Pyramid Air is sick of the situation, and if you know what I'm talking about, the last two years in the world, that was the situation. So they are giving away thousands of targets and stickers and want to see your frustration as well. They want to see you filming, snapping, or even talking about how you take out your frustration on these targets in a truly American way. To thank you for joining the fun, they are giving away $5,000 of shopping sprees weekly. First place is 3,000, is 3, second place 1.5, and third place is 500. Anyone can enter, no purchase is necessary. Check out the link below to, um, to find out more. And thank you so much for Pyramid, uh, Pyramid Air to making this possible. But now, let's talk about this situation, guys. I'm going to lay this out and give you some backstory. And this is kind of where we're at. So I'm sure you guys are aware, and if you're not, here's a brief summation. Last week, Biden signed into, into law the omnibus package, which contained gun control. It was under the Violence Against Women Act that Biden is always touting. Now, there was a big hullabaloo, and rightly so, the fact that gun control snuck through on the NRA's watch. That was the way that it was perceived. They put out this following uh, article, again, linked in the description box, and it says, Congress passes a fiscal year 2022 appropriations package with Violence Against Women Act of re um, reauthorization. Now, in this reauthorization explanation, they go through two things that were really of big concern to pretty much anywhere on the gun rights side. One, they were going after the investigations to local authorities for Nick's denials. That was one. And the other one was about uh, deputizing local law enforcement as ATF agents. Now, to, like from the NRA perspective, they put out a reason why they did not think this was an issue. I'm not addressing that. What I'm saying is that's the backstory here. So from the gun rights perspective, I'm sure some of you watching this, that was viewed as kind of a dropping the ball at best and worst a betrayal or dereliction of duty. Well, now this week, They've come out with a new one, and they're touting the victories that they had in this exact same package. Check this out. I want to hear from you guys on this one. Federal appropriations, pro-gun language restored. Now, this came out today, the March to our Monday, March 21st. Quote, this week, President Biden signed into law a massive spending bill that funds the government through the end of the year. And once again, NRA, the Institute for Legislative Action, was successful in working on Capitol Hill to keep anti-gun members of Congress from eliminating pro-gun writers such as the Tart Amendment and releasing trace data in the Dickey Amendment. Now, those are incredibly important. The Dickey Amendment prohibiting the Center for Disease Control from advocating, advocating for gun control. The extensive work covered hearings, bill markups, and votes in committee and on the floor to keep those provisions from being stripped out. NRA-ILA was also effective in engaging the Senate to restore long-standing pro-gun language that was stripped in the House versions of the Appropriations Bill. This has been lauded as a huge win in protecting the Second Amendment um, in, the, in a Democrat-controlled Congress. The whole thing here is they're saying, we did a good job, and here's how we did a good job. It's a Democrat-controlled con Congress, but we still got the Tart Amendment, and I always say that wrong, I know, and then the, um, the Dickey Amendment, which are both really good amendments for us, and we want those in instilled. Again, I can't verify that they actually had a direct hand in that because this was done behind door, behind closed doors. Now, the Dickey Amendment is a provision first inserted as a rider in the 1996 United States federal government omnibus spending package, which mandated that none of the funds made available for injury prevention and control at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention may be used to advocate or promote gun control. Okay, that's a big one, right? And the Tyrt Amendment, Tyrt, Tyrt, whatever, the TIA HRT Amendment. It's a provision of the U.S. Department of Justice Appropriations Bill that prohibits the National Tracing Center of the ATF from releasing information in its firearms trace database to anyone other than law enforcement agencies or prosecutor in connection with the criminal investigation, i.e. 
No one else is getting access to that data. Those are both two really great things. And here's the second thing that they said in this same article. In addition to protecting writers that strengthen the Second Amendment, NRA-ILA was successful in having extreme gun control measures stripped from the final spending plan. Earlier this term, House Democrats included language in their spending proposal that would have essentially banned so-called ghost guns, as well as providing funding for nationwide red flag laws. Now, that's referring to the boyfriend loophole that was in the Violence Against Women Act. It was removed. Gun licensing schemes and taxpayer-funded buyback proposals. House Democrats pushed the proposals in an attempt to circumvent regular order and enact backdoor gun grabs. NRA-ILA worked with pro-gun members of U.S. Senate to see the provisions stuck. Now, again, that's the whole thing was, we did all this on your behalf. I don't know if they actually did this, but it sounds like this is either a, a most amazing resume builder for this year, or they're trying to save face with you, their supporters, or potential supporters, based off of last week's actions. Here's some other things they got in here, and I'm just going to read them off really quickly. Firearms, part export to Canada, importation of curios and relics, shotgun importation protections, protecting lead ammo and fishing tackle from TSCA regulation, protecting historic firearms and spent brass casings from destruction. That's kind of cool for reloading. No tax dollars to lobby and promote gun control. Now that's awesome. Again, is this a puff piece to build themselves up and save face? Or is this actual legitimate work that they were supposed to be doing and we should support it because we don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater? You guys let me know what you think in the comments field below, and I'll see you tonight at the 9 p.m. segment. I'm Braden. See you later.